Hello everyone, and welcome back to Review Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In today's lesson, we'll find out how to know who created or changed anything in a workshared Revit project. Remember that time when you really wanted to know who deleted certain elements from your model? This is the way to find out. We will cover a few methods, ranging from the easiest to the most involved. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now to get tutorials like this every single day. Now, let's get started. So, by workshop project, I assume that you have set up a central model and everyone in your team is making local files, making changes in those files and syncing back to central. In this environment, the easiest way to find out who made changes to the central file, if you kind of know roughly when those changes were made, is to check the file history. This is how. Let me close this central model first. We can now close this recent file screen, go to Collaborate, and choose to show history. This is when you can browse to the central model location. In my case, it's this one. Select the model now, and click Open. As you can see now, you have here the full list of users that have been working on this file, and the date and time that they did so. If I scroll down this list now, I will see a few other names. So let's say, for example, that on February the 14th, at 9.30 a.m., you knew the file were still having all the required elements. But half a day later, those elements disappeared, somebody deleted them. Then you can go back here and see that after this timestamp, maybe one of those usernames listed up here could be responsible. Now, obviously, this is a very rough way to find out, and it's not so accurate. Because here, you may have several other names, and who knows which one did the change. And also, it's hard to always know when roughly the undesired change was made to the central file. But anyway, this is the easiest method, so use it if you can. The second method is something you can do in the model. So let me close this and open the central model first. You can either open it directly or just make a new logo as user. Okay, now we need to locate an element that you want to check history of. Let's go to 3D now. And the trick is to go down to this bar, click on Work Sharing Display, and choose any of those four modes. I can choose Owners now. And now when you hover your mouse over a certain element in the file, like this one there, a tooltip will come up, and in the tooltip you will see the name of the user that created this element, and also the name of the person last updated this element in the central file. Here's what that means. If I go to here now, and make a new person standing on this balcony. I can now hover over it, and it's going to say now that other user, which is my username in this test session, is both the owner and the creator of this element. If I now synchronize this file to central, and go back to show the same tooltip, my name is now also listed under last updated in central by, because I just added it to the central model. The other one here, the existing element. I can see now that it's created by ZHANGG. If I now move it this way and then synchronize, my username other test user will now appear under last updated in central by. So this method is obviously a lot more detailed compared to the previous one. And it's very accurate if you want to find out who created a certain element. Anyway, there are two things to watch out for if you use this method. Firstly, this tooltip may not come up even if you enable workshopping mode. If that happens to you, go to File, choose Revit Options, under User Interface. Make sure to set this tooltip assistance to something other than None. If this was None, that tooltip wouldn't come up. So always try and choose another value here. For now, I'm going to go with High. That means whenever Revit can show me a tooltip, it will do so. The second problem with this method is, it works very well on model elements. In other words, things you can see and select like this in the file. But how about things like views, sheets, families, and so on? This feature actually still works for them. But to see the detail of those non-model elements, you need to use Dynamo. Now don't worry, I have written a script for you, ready to download and use. So let's just open Dynamo now. From the Manage tab, choose Dynamo. And then just download this work sharing info Dynamo script from a link in the description below. Once you've done that, open this in Dynamo. And here, the only input to specify is the element ID of the object you want to check. 
So let's say I want to check on level two view. I want to know who created it. I can just go and select it like this and then go to manage, choose IDs of selection. That's the value I want to copy. You can right click copy now and then paste this into this input node. Press run and it's going to show me the creator and the person who last changed this view. We can try now to rename this view, maybe level two test. If I try to synchronize to central now, we can now close this script down, open it again and run it. You can see now it's showing my name under that last changed by box. The creator is still the same, but now this one has changed. Feel free to get this script and use it on anything that you cannot select and see that two tip element easily in your model. Anyway, there's a third problem to this method. Let's say I want to delete this chair here and then synchronize to central. A few weeks later, if someone wondered why that chair disappeared, there's no way to find out using this method because there's nothing here now for them to select and see the tooltip. To work out who deleted this element, they will need to check my journal files. In Revit, a journal file is essentially a very extensive log file that gets populated whenever you do any tiny things in the program. So if I have here deleted this element, in that journal file, there will be one line that says this user deleted this element at that time and date. So if I was the BIM manager of this project and I wanted to find out who deleted a million of elements, I can then collect the journal files from all the users of this central model, go through them one by one and see who performed that delete command. So let's try that. We need to know now where to get the journal file. For my revision here under my username, this is where. Just open your Windows Explorer window. Go to the C drive. Open the users folder. And then open the folder for your username. You can then open a folder here called app data. If it's not showing, that is because you haven't got hidden folders turned on. Just go to file options. And in here, make sure under the view tab, you have this show hidden files folder in drives box ticked. Click OK. And then this folder should show up for you. Open this now. Go to local. Autodesk. Revit. And then choose the Revit version you use it. In my case, it's 2021. And in the journals, you will see the journal files for this Revit session. I will sort this now by date modified. And you can see now they are sequentially numbered. The higher the number, the more recent the session is, because for each of session, there'll be one journal file here being created. So for this current one here, I'm quite sure it's this one, journal file number 0113. Let's now open this in any text editor you like. For me, it's Notepad++. And because this one is locking anything happening in the Revit session, it's quite an extensive and long file. Just go down to the bottom where the last command was recorded and then press Ctrl F and search for command. Whenever this word appears, that means there was a command being performed in Revit. I can now go up to search for the last few occurrences of this word. So I can see straight away the command here is delete the selection and a button was pressed that was ID button select. Just the name of the button. If I go up a few more times, I can see other commands that I performed just now. For example, this is where I turn off the work sharing display mode for a view. And this is where I turned it on previously. So as you can see, if you can locate all the journal files for a team at a certain date where the problem probably occurred, you can go through all of them and eventually find out who did what precisely to the single and individual buttons that I clicked. However, this is a bit intense, as you can see already. There'll be a lot of data to churn through. So it's just a matter of balancing your effort. Sometimes it's quicker if someone in the team bite the bullet and redo the elements that were deleted or recreate the piece of work that was lost. For me personally, a combination of work sharing tooltips and the Dynamo script I showed before is enough most of the time. All right, if you like more tutorials like this coming every single day, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, get this Dynamo script from the description, have a play with it, and I'll see you in the next lesson.